Today, I want to show you how to chain piece so you'll be able to piece quicker, and I'm also going to share my method for keeping organized while doing so. Hi, I'm Kim Jamison Hurst of Chatterbox Quilts, and today we are going to do some piecing. So, when I am working on a project that has several rows in it, it's more efficient to chain piece but when you're doing that, sometimes you can get a little confused. Well, at least I can. And so I have developed a method that keeps me organized while I am chain piecing. And that's what we're gonna take a look at today. So what I've got in front of me here is I've got some charm squares, and these are actually be three different rows that we're going to sew together. So how do I know what order I should be piecing them in, and how do I know which pieces are gonna come next afterwards? This is where I get very confused. Now, we wanna do chain piecing because it's a lot quicker. So I'm gonna show you what chain piecing is, but basically what it is is it's stitching the seam on the first row, the first pieces in that row, and then just continuing along with however many rows you may have. And you're continuing to add your fabrics in that manner. And at the end, everything's all stitched together. Uh, then there's thread in between the rows and it looks like sort of like a cobweb basically when you're done. Okay, an organized cobweb. But it's just a lot quicker instead of having to cut your thread in between every single row when you're doing it. So let me show you my secret weapon when I'm doing that and that is clips, all right? So we used to use pins to keep things together. Now clips can be much more efficient. And the fact that these clips are colored is what's gonna help keep us organized. So let's take a closer look at what's happening here. So here's all my pieces that I wanna to put together for row number one. I'm talking about a horizontal row, okay? We're gonna start off with this piece is gonna be first, and then this piece comes, and then the rest of the pieces are coming along, okay? So what I do is I take my first two pieces, put them right sides together. This is how we're gonna stitch them. I'm not worried about lining up the edges or anything here. I'm just doing this to keep them organized. And I've decided that I'm gonna use pink as row number one color. So I'm taking that clip and I'm clipping it on the side where we're going to stitch because that's something else I get confused about sometimes. Sometimes I put them down, I go, uh, do I put them on stitch on this side or on this side? And while it doesn't make so much of a difference maybe in the first couple pieces, it definitely makes a difference as you go along. So I put that clip right where I'm going to be actually stitching my quarter inch seam, okay? Now I have these guys left over. Now there's only two pieces on this one, but there could be a lot more. Typically there would be, right? So what I do is I take another pink clip and I clip them together. I'm not so concerned about the side here because I will just be flipping them as I go but I do want to identify them as pieces that should be stitched in row one. And the pink clip does that for me, okay? So we're gonna use a similar method going down for row two, and let's say row two is green. So I want these to go together in this fashion. So, you know, if you have directional fabric or something, you wanna make sure that it's facing the right way, of course, and then stick that little green clip on the side you're actually going to be stitching. And then the rest of the fabrics that are coming along they get a green clip too. Let's go to row three. This is the last one in what we're going to be doing. And so I want these to go together this way. All right, and I'm gonna use orange. Okay, we're gonna get some different colors here. All right, and then the rest of them in row three, get that orange clip too. So you can see how I've laid these out, all right? So row one is pink, row two is green, and row three is orange. All right, so now, the next step is, of course, to start sewing them together. So I'm gonna go with the machine and show you how I sew these together, and that will explain a little bit more about chain piecing first off, and how these other pieces will get added on as we go along. I just brought all the fabric over to the machine, but I want to explain a few things to you. So I only have three rows here. Typically, you know, you probably have more than that, and they might not all fit you know, on your machine bed here. You might have to have them somewhere separate. But again, having these different color clips means you could actually stack them up and it won't cause a problem. What I do suggest you do is that, uh, either in your pattern or just on a little piece of paper, is to write down, you know, pink row one, green row two, orange row three, red row four, right, you know, whatever. Okay, so that if, you know, at the end of the day, you gather up what's left, if you haven't completed all of it, 
then the next day you'll know, you know, the proper order. So a little bit of thinking sometimes, but I think you'll find that this method works pretty well. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to move these off because we're going to start with row number one here. And I want to talk about chain piecing, okay? So I'm going to move my other pieces off to the side somewhere. I mean, I don't have to have them in the bed of my machine where I was just stuck them now, but it works for the demo purposes, okay? So remember we had this little these little squares here and we had the pink on the right side so I know that's what I'm going to put under my needle at this point in time I'm actually going to you know line them all up right to do my stitching right and I'm starting with a leader and an ender it will be my finishing off part but I'm starting with my leader here if you don't know what that is check the description below because I've got a video on what those are and why it's a good idea to use them when you're piecing. And so what I'm doing right now, and when I'm chain piecing, you're going to see this with the next ones as well, is I'm butting that fabric right up against my needle. Okay, I'm not leaving a big gap or anything. I want it right against the needle. And then we're just going to sew with our quarter inch seam. Okay, and I will just stitch off probably one sometimes it's two with this machine cycling like it did here uh, off of that fabric and the next thing I want to do is I want to go to row two so I am stitching down my columns okay putting the rows together so I'm going to just take my little pink guy and put him back up since we've stitched this together put him right back on there okay so now I am going to work with my green row so we're doing the same thing we're going to get it all nicely lined up at the side there. And we're going to butt that right up against the needle and we're going to stitch. I'm going to put my little green clip right back on there. Okay. And I know my green, my green pieces are over here. Like it doesn't matter where they are because they have the green clip on them, right? Now we're going to go with the orange. Again, same process, right? Just get them all together there, line them up. It's always interesting with charm squares <laughs> with the pink edges. And we're gonna butt that right up against the needle and go. Okay, so this is my last uh, row that I'm doing. So at this point in time, I wanna add my ender there. Okay, I'm just going to stop one stitch off the ender as well. And before I cut anything off, we want to put that little orange clip back on there. All right, I mean, these are joined together, so it's kind of obvious where the beginning and end is, right? But not a bad idea to keep the clips on. Now, at this point in time, a couple things you can do. Some people like to go at this point in time and actually press their seam open. Of course, you're going to take your clip off and I would just stick it somewhere else on here. I'm just trying to keep that clip with it, right? So you could press them open or you could wait until you've completed all of your rows, in which case everything will be hanging together by those threads and you could press them at that time because typically what you'll do is press one row one direction, the second one and the other one. You'll alternate the row, uh, the direction that you're pressing each row so that they'll nest together when you come time to put those together, all right? But at this point in time, I'm not going to do that I, because I want to show you what the next step would be. And the next step would be to grab the rest of your fabric. So remember, we had some fabrics that were there that had the pink clip on them, right? So we want to add them. So I'm going to take the pink clip off the first one and off this one I'm going to stitch on now. I am going to put the pink clip back on the remaining pieces. There's only one in this case, but there could be several, right? And I'm going to open this up, of course, because we want to keep stitching and adding to this row. So we open that up. I know it gets a bit noisy with the clips, right? But try and disregard that. And then we're just going to stitch this onto the second piece in row one. All right. So again, butting that right up against the needle and sew. All righty. At this point in time, I'm going to take that pink clip and stick it on there, okay? I'm going to do the same thing with rows two and rows three. So we get our little green clip. We are going to take it off here. This is the one that's going to go on. So I'm going to flip him over and put the green clip 
back on the remaining pieces. Okay, so let's put this on and let's sew this one together. I think you're getting the hang of it now, right? So let me just get this one going here. Here we go. Need to adjust a bit as I go along. And one more stitch. All right, and then get that green clip back on there, right? And now, of course, we've come to our final one, which is our orange. Aren't you glad we've come to the final one? <laughs> All right, and here's our orange piece to put on. Take the top one off, flip it over because it's going to be stitched right there. Get that orange clip back on the remaining piece and you can just put it aside for now. Again, lining things up as we always do and you're going to butt these fabrics right against that needle, stitch with that quarter inch seam. And because we're at the end here, we want to stick on one of our little enders. Okay, and then we can just clip this off. Of course, we want to add that orange clip right on that last one there, okay? So this keeps us organized. It shows us what the rows are, and it also tells you which side you're going to be sewing to. I mean, probably wouldn't sew to this side here, but you know, having the pin on this side means we're adding in this direction, okay? So again, if you want to iron it, you could. If not, you just continue on. So I think you get the point, right? So at the end of the day, if you still had some of these not added to your rows yet, and you have to stop, having the clips on them means it doesn't matter what order they're in, okay? The next day you're gonna be able to come out and go, oh, pink was the first one, Green was the second, orange was the third, and you're just going to be able to carry on. So it makes it very, very easy. Next thing I want to do is go back to the cutting table because I have something else to tell you about the clips. So this is what I've sewn together so far. So you've got three rows going here and the extra pieces that are going to be added onto it. And I just want to show you what this looks like. So I'm just going to take off the little clips right now. And so you can see how this is hanging together, all right? So you can see when I talk about kind of a cobweb look, it's gonna be all, all hanging together when you're done. And so you can either, like I said before, press as you go along or wait until the end and press the rows the way you want. Now, I did wanna mention something about these clips because they come in a limited number of colors, of course. And so what happens when you have 10 or 20 rows, let's say, and you've only got six different colors of clips? That could be a bit of a problem, right? Well, I want to point out a few things to you. First off, you only need two clips per row. You can see how you've got the clips for the one that we're sewing along and the rest that are going to be sewn to that row. So you only need two clips, okay? So really easy thing to do is to take some nail polish. Let's go with this color. Okay, you want to have something that contrasts with the color of the clip so you can actually see it. Okay, so let's take this nice green, for example. And you can just put a little dot on the clip. Now, you may not want to use the nail polish brush. It might be easier to just take a uh, toothpick or something like that, but that works just fine. So you can just put it on there enough so you can see it, all right? But you want to get two clips of the same color and put the same color nail polish on them. So that makes a set. So that's the way to extend your clips because they only come in a limited number of colors anyway. Now let's talk about what you do when you've got these all sewn together because you don't want to necessarily keep them like that, right? Two things you can do. You can either clip the rows apart, all right? Once the rows are all sewn together, just clip them apart. So you have rows one separate from two and three. Or some people actually like to leave them together and flip them over and just stitch them together after they've matched the seams, of course. So your choice on how you want to do that. All right, so I hope this has been helpful for you. And I hope you'll try it the next time you're doing chain piecing because I find it's really helpful to keep me organized and making sure that I have the pieces I'm putting together in the right orientation and in the right rows. So thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to share it with your quilting friends. And remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified the next time I have a new video. I've also included some additional videos for you that I think you'll find helpful. Okay, where's that clip? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we good on this one?